This essay plunges into the rich tapestry of the world's military history, laying bare the stories of ten of the most fearsome warrior cultures that ever existed. The ferocity, discipline, and distinctive tactics of these warriors left an indelible mark on the annals of human conflict. Number 1. The Spartans, Ancient Greece In the rugged terrains of the Peloponnesian Peninsula in southern Greece, a society flourished whose entire existence was bent on the art of warfare, Sparta. Birthed in the 9th century BCE, Spartan culture came to be recognized as the embodiment of martial prowess and unyielding courage, shaping an entire race of warriors that would stand unrivaled for centuries. A Spartan male's life was defined by the Agogi, the state education program that transformed seven-year-old boys into lethal warriors. The Agoge was a grueling process involving rigorous physical training, instruction in survival, and indoctrination in the Spartan ethos of discipline, self-denial, and bravery. Through this arduous regime, Spartan youths were forged into a fraternity of warriors, ready to lay down their lives for Sparta. The Spartan hoplites, the citizen soldiers, were known for their iconic crimson cloaks and bronze Corinthian helmets. They fought in a phalanx formation, a dense, shielded infantry line with overlapping spears, which was virtually impenetrable when operated by disciplined and well-trained warriors. Their formidable fighting style was encapsulated at the Battle of Thermopylae in 480 BCE, where 300 Spartans, led by King Leonidas, made a heroic last stand against the invading Persian army. Despite being vastly outnumbered, these Spartans inflicted heavy casualties on the Persian force before succumbing. This heroic defense encapsulated the Spartan ethos of preferring death to surrender, embodied in the famous Spartan phrase, with your shield or on it, signifying that a Spartan warrior should either return victorious with his shield or borne upon it in death. The Spartans also demonstrated an intense commitment to collective warfare. They trained and fought as a unit, and their tactics required absolute obedience and synchronization. This group-based approach was unique for its time, making them one of the most fearsome warrior cultures in history. The prowess and tenacity of the Spartans had an influential impact, not only on the contemporaneous Greek states, but also echoing down the corridors of time. They were more than just warriors. They were symbols of courage, resilience, and discipline, embodying the essence of their city-state's militant ethos. Sparta was ultimately weakened by constant warfare and eventually subsumed by larger forces in the region. However, the memory of the Spartans, the crimson-cloaked warriors from the rugged lands of Laconia, continues to captivate us. Their legacy is etched into the bedrock of military history, serving as a testament to their unwavering dedication to martial excellence and their formidable prowess in battle. Number 2. The Roman Legionaries, Roman Empire Emerging from the heart of Italy, the Roman Empire built an enduring legacy that spanned multiple continents and epochs, its robust foundation anchored by the might and organization of the Roman legions. The Roman legionaries, the backbone of this dominant military machine, were professional soldiers unlike any the world had seen before, and their mark on history remains palpable even today. The Roman military system was an intricate combination of discipline, organization, and innovation. Each legion, typically comprising around 5,000 men, was a self-sufficient entity complete with infantry, cavalry, and auxiliary units. The tactical versatility and robustness of the legions were enhanced by the maniple formation, a flexible, manipulable block of 120 men that provided the Roman army with a significant advantage in the varied terrains they battled. The legionaries, predominantly heavy infantry, were armed with a short sword known as a gladius, and a javelin called the pilum. Their body was shielded with segmented armor, lorica segmentata, and a large rectangular shield, scutum. This formidable combination of arms and armor rendered the Roman soldier both an exceptional defender and a deadly attacker on the battlefield. But it was not merely their equipment that defined Roman legionaries. Each soldier underwent a rigorous training regimen, honing their physical strength, learning how to handle their weapons, and practicing battlefield maneuvers. This persistent training cultivated an unyielding discipline among the legionaries and engendered a spirit of camaraderie, the collective strength of which was a formidable force on the battlefield. 
Perhaps the epitome of the Roman legion's prowess and versatility was displayed during the Battle of Alesia in 52 BCE. Julius Caesar's legions, significantly outnumbered, built formidable fortifications around the besieged city of Alesia and held off the combined forces of Gaulish tribes until reinforcements arrived. This victory underscored the Roman legion's strategic brilliance, indomitable discipline, and tenacious courage, attributes that would come to define their legacy. The legionaries also played a significant role in Rome's expansion, carrying the Roman standard to distant lands. They were not just conquerors but also builders, constructing roads, forts, and aqueducts in the provinces they annexed. Through their martial prowess and their contributions to Roman infrastructure, they played an instrumental role in shaping the Roman Empire. The influence of the Roman legions is still visible today. Modern military strategies, organization, and even attire have drawn inspiration from the legionaries. The enduring imagery of the Roman legionary, a disciplined and formidable warrior standing with his gladius and scutum, testifies to the profound impact the legions had on the Roman Empire and the broader landscape of military history. Despite the fall of the Roman Empire, the spirit of the Roman legionaries remains a testament to Rome's past glories and a symbol of the indomitable power of a well-trained, disciplined, and organized military force. Number 3. The Viking Raiders – Norse Culture The mention of Vikings often conjures up images of fearsome, axe-wielding warriors descending from dragon-headed longboats onto unsuspecting settlements. Originating from the Nordic countries of Norway, Sweden, and Denmark around the 8th century CE, the Vikings were not merely raiders and pillagers, but also skilled seafarers, traders, and explorers, their influence stretching from North America to the Byzantine Empire. The Viking warriors' reputation for ferocity and fearlessness is well documented in historical and archaeological records. Their warfare was characterized by lightning-fast raids known as Vikinger, from which they derived their name. These warriors were equipped with a variety of weapons, including swords, axes, and spears, while their defense was augmented by wooden shields and chainmail armor. One distinguishing feature of Viking warfare was their seaborne approach. The Vikings were exceptional shipbuilders and navigators, their longships capable of traversing both oceans and shallow rivers. This skill allowed them to launch sudden attacks on coastal settlements and retreat swiftly before substantial resistance could be organized, spreading fear across Europe. Viking society placed significant value on martial prowess. As per Norse sagas and mythology, a warrior who fell in battle was believed to be chosen by Odin, the king of the gods, to join him in Valhalla, the great hall of fallen warriors. This belief in a glorious afterlife for warriors who died bravely in battle was a driving force behind the Vikings' ferociousness in combat. Their audacity and tactical adaptability were exemplified in the Siege of Paris in 845 CE. Despite facing a well-fortified city and a formidable Frankish army, the Vikings, led by the legendary chieftain Ragnar Lothbrok, leveraged their superior navigation skills and strategic acumen to breach the city's defenses, ultimately forcing the Frankish king Charles the Bald to pay them off. While primarily known for their ferocity in battle, Vikings were also instrumental in establishing trade routes across Europe and Asia, founding vibrant cities like Dublin, and contributing to the cultural and political landscape of the regions they settled in. Their exploration led them to the shores of North America, centuries before Christopher Columbus's famed voyage. The Viking era came to an end by the 11th century CE, with the Christianization of Scandinavia and changing political structures in Europe. But the impact of their warrior culture, imbued with a combination of brutal fierceness, exploration zeal, and tactical intelligence, remains a crucial part of our understanding of the medieval period. The Viking warriors, in their longboats under the fluttering raven banners, continue to sail through the annals of history, their legacy a testament to a remarkable blend of ferocity, exploration, and cultural influence. Number 4. The Samurai. Feudal Japan. The land of the rising sun harbors a rich and intricate history, interwoven with the tale of a class of noble warriors known as the Samurai. 
Their existence, spanning from the 12th to the 19th century CE, personified a unique fusion of martial mastery, spiritual devotion, and unfaltering loyalty. The samurai were not only the military nobility, but also the backbone of the social and political structure of feudal Japan. The samurai's martial training was comprehensive, covering a wide array of weaponry and battlefield tactics. Samurai warriors were adept in the use of the katana, a curved, single-edged sword, which came to symbolize their status and martial skill. They were also proficient in the use of bows, spears, and later, firearms. Samurai armor was meticulously crafted, designed to offer optimal mobility without compromising protection. The samurai's approach to warfare was not limited to mere physical prowess. They adhered to a strict moral and ethical code known as Bushido, or the way of the warrior. Bushido emphasized values such as loyalty, honor, righteousness, and self-discipline. It dictated that a samurai must be willing to face death in the line of duty, embodying the concept of seppuku, a ritual suicide committed to preserve honor. Samurai culture was unique in its integration of martial arts with Zen Buddhism and other philosophical teachings. This fusion gave rise to practices like meditation and calligraphy, aiming to achieve mental tranquility, clarity and focus, valuable attributes on and off the battlefield. Samurai warfare's strategic acumen was visible in the Genpei War, 1180 to 1185 CE, a power struggle between the Minamoto and Taira clans. The decisive naval battle of Dan no Ura showcased the Minamoto clan's tactical ingenuity, exploiting the tide patterns to disrupt the Taira formation, leading to their victory and the establishment of the Kamakura Shogunate. While the era of the samurai gradually declined with the Meiji Restoration in the late 19th century, their influence on Japanese culture and society continues to persist. Concepts of loyalty, discipline, honor, and the continual pursuit of perfection in one's craft have permeated into many aspects of modern Japanese society. The samurai represent a vivid chapter of Japanese history, epitomizing an intricate blend of martial skill, spirituality, and a strict code of ethics. The image of the samurai, clad in elegant armor and holding a gleaming katana, prepared to stake his life for honor and duty, is an enduring symbol of a warrior culture that continues to captivate the world's imagination. Through the tales of their bravery, wisdom, and commitment, the samurai have etched an indelible mark in the annals of global history. Number 5. The Mongol Horsemen Mongol Empire. From the expansive steppes of Central Asia emerged an empire that would stretch from Eastern Europe to the Korean Peninsula, orchestrated by the exceptional cavalry of the Mongols. Led by the charismatic and visionary Genghis Khan in the early 13th century CE, the Mongol horsemen rode forth, their conquests reshaping the world. The Mongols were predominantly a nomadic culture, their lives intertwined with their sturdy and nimble horses. These horses not only served as their primary means of transportation, but were also an integral part of Mongol warfare. Mongol warriors were trained horsemen from childhood, their equestrian skills unmatched, enabling them to execute complex maneuvers at high speeds. The Mongol warriors, while not as heavily armored as some of their adversaries, were exceptionally skilled with the composite bow. This weapon, combined with their horseback archery skills, allowed them to rain arrows upon their enemies while swiftly evading counterattacks, a tactic known as the Parthian Shot. This mobility, combined with their strategic use of feigned retreats and encirclements, made the Mongol horsemen a formidable force on the battlefield. But the might of the Mongol horsemen was not limited to their martial skills alone. They possessed an efficient communication system, the Yam, which was a relay system of riders and horses. It enabled swift transmission of messages across vast distances, enhancing the coordination and strategic execution of their campaigns. The full extent of the Mongol horsemen's prowess and strategic brilliance can be seen in the conquest of Khwarazm. Despite being significantly outnumbered, the Mongols, under the leadership of Genghis Khan, utilized superior tactics and psychological warfare to dismantle the Khwarazmian defenses, leading to the fall of one of the most powerful empires of the time. The Mongol Empire's expansion was not merely a tale of conquest and destruction. They also facilitated significant cultural and technological exchange across Eurasia, famously establishing the Pax Mongolica, 
a period of peace and trade across the Silk Road. However, it was the image of the Mongol horsemen, fearlessly charging across the plains with their bows drawn, that left an indelible impression in the pages of history. The Mongol Empire eventually fragmented due to succession disputes and overextension. But the legacy of the Mongol horsemen endures. Their unique style of warfare, characterized by unmatched equestrian skills, strategic acumen, and audacity, marked a distinctive chapter in military history. The echoes of the galloping hooves across the Eurasian steppe continue to reverberate, a tribute to the extraordinary warrior culture that once rode under the banner of the Mongol Empire. Number 6. The Maori Warriors, Polynesian New Zealand Among the verdant landscapes and rugged coastlines of Aotearoa, New Zealand, the Maori people established a warrior culture steeped in tradition, courage, and spirituality. Descendants of Polynesian explorers, the Maori developed a unique martial culture in the isolation of the South Pacific, defined by its fierce warriors and intricate socio-spiritual practices. The Maori warriors, or Toa, were renowned for their combat skills and sheer physicality. They were skilled in wielding a range of weapons, including the Tayaha, a type of spear or staff, Mir, a short, broad-bladed club, and Patu, a club generally made from stone or bone. Toa trained rigorously in the martial art of Maorakau, mastering their weapons and developing their strength and agility. Combat in Maori culture was not merely a physical contest, it held significant spiritual and ritualistic importance. Prior to a battle, the Tohunga, or priests, would often perform ceremonies to invoke the protection of the gods. Warriors would participate in the Puruparu, a war dance intended to intimidate the enemy and invoke the warrior's mana, or spiritual power and authority. This blend of physical and spiritual warfare was showcased in the haka, a ceremonial dance or challenge. The haka, with its powerful gestures, rhythmic foot stamping, and potent chants, served multiple purposes. It could be a display of collective strength, a welcome to distinguished guests, or a challenge thrown to opponents on the battlefield. One distinct feature of the Maori warriors was their extensive use of facial and body tattoos, or moko. These intricate patterns were deeply symbolic, representing a warrior's lineage, achievements, and status. The moko was considered sacred, the process of its creation a significant rite of passage. Maori warfare was often focused on the acquisition and defense of mana and resources. The inter-tribal musket wars of the early 19th century fought after the introduction of firearms by European settlers, significantly impacted Maori society, leading to shifts in territorial boundaries and tribal structures. The arrival of British colonists and subsequent conflicts, notably the New Zealand Wars of the 19th century, marked a tumultuous period in Maori history. Despite being disadvantaged in terms of weaponry and resources, the Maori warriors, with their fierce courage and knowledge of the local terrain, put up a staunch resistance. Though much has changed in the centuries since, the spirit of the Maori warriors persists, with traditional practices, martial arts, and the haka continuing to be integral parts of Maori cultural identity. The legacy of the Maori warriors serves as a testament to a people who, despite adversities, upheld their traditions and fought to preserve their mana, their way of life, and their place in the verdant lands of Aotearoa. Number 7. The Apache Warriors Native American tribes. In the arid landscapes of the southwestern United States, the Apache tribes etched a legacy of resilience and guerrilla warfare that continues to resonate. Known for their nomadic lifestyle and formidable martial prowess, the Apache warriors stood as a symbol of resistance against encroaching foreign powers, particularly during the Apache Wars of the 19th century. Apache warriors were adept at desert survival, and were capable of traversing vast distances swiftly and stealthily. They were experts in hit-and-run tactics, using the rugged terrain to their advantage to launch surprise attacks and evading pursuit. Their knowledge of the local environment, combined with their physical endurance and strategic cunning, made them effective guerrilla fighters. The Apaches used a variety of weapons, including bows, spears, war clubs, and knives. They were also skilled horsemen, a trait adopted after the introduction of horses by Spanish explorers. They mastered the art of horse stealing, which was not only a crucial survival skill, but also a prestigious act signifying bravery and prowess. 
Among the Apache's spiritual practices, warfare had a significant place. Prior to battle, warriors would participate in rituals and dances, such as the war dance, to seek spiritual strength and protection. They believed in the power of gods or mountain spirits, which were invoked to protect the warriors and help them in their quests. The Apache warriors, with their legendary leaders like Geronimo Cochise and Mangus Coloradas, painted a narrative of resistance and survival in the face of overwhelming odds. Their legacy, carved into the arid landscapes of the Southwest, serves as a testament to their indomitable spirit and the profound bond between a people and their land. Their story is a stark reminder of the sacrifices made, battles fought, and resilience shown in the face of loss and adversity. Number 8. The Zulu Warriors, African Tribes In the verdant valleys and rolling hills of southern Africa, the Zulu Kingdom emerged as a formidable power in the early 19th century under the reign of Shaka Zulu. With a disciplined and innovative military, the Zulu warriors, known as the Impi, became a symbol of African resistance against colonial expansion, their prowess echoing notably during the Anglo-Zulu War of 1879. The military organization and tactics of the Zulu warriors were revolutionized under Shaka's rule. Shaka introduced the Ikilwa, a short stabbing spear and a larger, sturdier shield, transforming close combat dynamics. This combination allowed the Zulu warriors to engage in a more intimate form of combat, breaking enemy lines with a well-coordinated Buffalo Horns formation. Shaka also established a rigorous military training program, instilling discipline and endurance in his warriors. The Impi were organized into age-based regiments, or Ibutho, creating a regimental system that enhanced the army's cohesion and effectiveness. Zulu warfare was not just a matter of physical might, it also encompassed spiritual rituals. The Zulu warriors invoked the protection and guidance of their ancestors before going into battle through prayer, offerings, and the ingestion of medicinal concoctions. The tale of the Zulu warriors, their discipline, their innovative tactics, and their courage in the face of foreign invasion casts a significant light on African military history. The image of the Zulu warrior, armed with an ikilwa and shield rushing fearlessly towards the enemy, stands as a lasting emblem of resistance, resilience, and the indomitable spirit of Africa. Through their epic battles and tireless defiance, the Zulu warriors have etched an indelible mark on the pages of history. Number 9. Medieval Europe the image of the knight in shining armor riding valiantly into battle is an enduring symbol of the medieval period in Europe. From the 11th to the 15th centuries CE, knights were the elite warriors of feudal Europe, bound by codes of chivalry and honor, their roles intertwined with the socio-political fabric of the era. Knights were primarily of the noble class, their status often hereditary. Training to become a knight started early in life, where a young boy would serve as a page and later a squire before being knighted. The knighting ceremony was a significant rite of passage, often accompanied by religious rituals, emphasizing the knight's duty to uphold Christian values. Knights were typically heavily armed and armored. They wielded swords, lances, and maces, and donned chainmail or plate armor. The advent of stirrups allowed knights to effectively use lances while on horseback, leading to the development of the iconic cavalry charge and jousting tournaments. Knights followed a moral and behavioral code known as chivalry, which highlighted virtues such as bravery, loyalty, honor, and courtesy. The concept of courtly love also emerged during this period, painting the knight as a noble lover as well as a formidable warrior. The legacy of knights is deeply woven into European culture, their tales populating folklore, literature, and art. They represent an age of chivalry and heroism where martial prowess was blended with moral responsibility and religious fervor. The knight, resplendent in his armor, his banner flying high, charging fearlessly into the chaos of battle, remains an emblematic figure of the medieval age. Their narrative, marked by honor, faith, and love, echoes across the centuries, encapsulating the essence of a bygone era that continues to captivate the collective imagination. Number 10. The Gurkhas Nepal High in the rugged terrains of the Himalayas, a warrior culture emerged that would leave an indelible mark on global military history. These are the Gurkhas, hailing from the small South Asian country of Nepal. 
Their reputation for bravery, loyalty, and martial prowess has made them one of the most respected and feared warrior classes in the world. The Gurkhas take their name from the historic warrior saint Guru Goraknath, the founder of the Nepalese kingdom of Gorkha, from which they originate. The Gurkhas are predominantly drawn from several ethnic groups, including the Magars, Gurungs, and Rai, each with a storied tradition of warrior heritage. Central to the Gurkhas' martial tradition is the Kukuri, a distinctive inwardly curved knife. Beyond its function as a formidable weapon, the Kukuri symbolizes the Gurkhas' honor and bravery. A Gurkha soldier, once he has drawn his Kukuri in battle, must draw blood with it, even if it means cutting himself, a practice known as the Kaida. The world first took significant notice of the Gurkhas during the Anglo-Nepalese War of 1814 to 1816. Despite being outnumbered and outgunned, the Gurkhas exhibited remarkable courage and tenacity. So impressed were the British by the Gurkhas' fighting spirit that after the war, they began recruiting Gurkhas into the British Indian Army. Since then, Gurkhas have served in various British regiments in virtually every major conflict, including both World Wars, the Falklands War, and the conflicts in Iraq and Afghanistan. They have earned a reputation for their fearlessness in battle, exemplified in their motto, Better to die than to be a coward. The Gurkhas stand as a testament to the spirit of a warrior, their story a saga of loyalty and bravery under the harshest of circumstances. Their legend, carved into the high peaks of the Himalayas and etched into the annals of military history, continues to inspire, reminding us of the highest ideals of courage and duty.